My heart is to see God's people full of passion and the fire of God, hungry for His presence on a daily basis, full of His power and having a positive impact on the world and those around them, living a life of freedom and victory. This is Running With Fire. Hi, I'm Tark Barn, and welcome to another episode of Running With Fire. Today's message is taken from a message I preached at last year's New Zealand and Beyond Conference. In fact, we had some outstanding messages and we would love you to join us for this year's New Zealand and Beyond. You can register just by visiting New Zealand and Beyond website. There's food everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's neon signs, there's billboards and everything's calling us to come and eat, eat, eat. Some of us love to eat, others of us live to eat. I think sometimes I find myself in the second category, I love to eat. There's something about food that I really enjoy. Of course, my favorite food, as some of you might know, is chicken curry. Well, God created food and he wants us to enjoy it. There's no problem with that. The problem is when we start reading in the Bible, it talks about this thing called fasting, which is going without food. And that is a real challenging thing for all of us to look at in our lives. The problem I find with fasting is that it is so powerful. In fact, it's one of the most powerful disciplines you can have in your life and is going to bring you breakthroughs when nothing else can do it. I remember a number of years ago, I was really struggling in my life. My attitudes had gone all over the place and I was just making no progress. Somehow in the midst of it, amazingly, God called me to do an extended fast. So I went and started fasting one, two, three days. I went on for quite some time. And then in the middle of that fast, when I was actually in a bad state, God spoke to me and gave me a key to my breakthrough. And as a result of prayer and fasting, I came into a breakthrough that I'd never experienced by doing any of the other things that I had tried. In this message, you're going to discover that prayer and fasting is one of the most powerful things that you can do. And even though you may love your food, it's worth going without from time to time, doing some fasting. It will change your life. Stay tuned. New Zealand and Beyond Conference 2016 is coming to Christchurch and Auckland, and it could change your life. With the theme, Heaven Come Down, each of the speakers will inspire and equip you to see more of heaven manifest in your life, church, and our nation. A visitation from heaven is on God's agenda for New Zealand. So make sure you're at New Zealand and Beyond 2016, hosted by Church Unlimited. For more info and to register, go to nzandbeyond.com. When the house behind us was being built, we had our house and there was an empty section behind us and I'd watch the builder come in with his van. He'd have all these masses of tools and uh, you know, he knew which ones to tool, which tools to use when he was building. So he had hammers and saws and chisels and, and uh, screwdrivers and, and everything else, nail guns. And, but just imagine for a moment, see there's the toolbox there. Imagine for a moment if he decided, well, you know, I don't really like the nail gun. I don't, I don't really like the saw. You know, I, I don't like the ham. I'm just going to bang with my hand. You think, man, you are crazy. You, 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 what's wrong with you? You know, you've been given tools to use. So use all the tools because certain tools work for certain things and they don't work in other areas. So God's given us, I believe, all the tools we need in our lives to get the results that we want to take place, to get, our, to get a breakthrough or whatever it might be. But Every, whatever it is, you know, that tool might be praise, it might be prayer, it might be giving, it might be sacrifice, it might be reaching out and love to someone. You know, there, there are tools that we know bring us through and give us breakthroughs in our lives. But sometimes we don't use all the tools. And we kind of say, yeah, well, I, I don't like that tool. And for some people, that's prayer. Well, I just really don't like that tool. So I'm just going to stick with praise and worship and all the rest of it. Friends, you know, there's, as we said yesterday, there's some things that certain tools are the only way you're going to get a certain result in your lifestyle or in your circumstance. So in my first message, because I want to look today at what I believe is probably one of, or if not the most powerful tool to uh, get, get, uh, see the things that we want to see take place in our lives and in our ministry. So on my first message, I talked about the process that's required to see the event happen. 
And the Seah Hill and our land hill, the necessary process is outlined in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If you know it, say it with me, please. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal their land. Well, that's what we're after, aren't we? God to heal our land. This is probably the clearest scripture that I know in the Bible that gives us the required process to see a land or a nation healed or, or to see revival, to see national blessing. And it says there, if my people, I want to suggest, everyone say if. Yeah. I think that's the biggest if that you find in all of scripture, in my opinion, because this if Depending on this if, and we, if we follow it, we'll decide whether a land, our land, is going to be healed, our city, our community, our nation, or even the nations. If, if everyone say it again, if. Yeah, it's such a big if. And I sort of think, God, why did you, you know, give us the option here? But he does. That's just the way God operates. If my people will humble themselves and pray. But Psalm 35, verse 30, I want to pick up on the word humble today. I humbled myself with fasting. Thank you for that really excited response that I've got here. <laughs> See, fasting is a key to healing our land, according to Scripture. And there's few obstacles I've found in my life that can withstand the power of prayer and fasting. Sometimes when I've got stuck in a situation, I've pulled this thing out of the toolbox, I've spent some time in fasting, and I want to tell you again and again and again and again, I have seen God come through in my situation. And every so often, we've got to take this tool out of the toolbox. Now, we may not want to do it, but we need to do it. If you find yourself maybe today in a desperate situation, maybe if your church has got to a place where you just can't move it forward any further. Or maybe there's a personal situation. I want to, as you listen today, I want to suggest that maybe the tool that you're going to have to pull out of the box is the tool of prayer and a particular emphasis on fasting. Because my Bible teaches me, if you read through the Scriptures, time and time again, when they hit a crisis, when there's something going wrong, when the enemy was overwhelming, over and over again, they turned to fasting, Old Testament and in the New Testament. So here's one example. So there's an edict goes out, and all the Jews are going to be annihilated. They're going to, be, they're going to finish off the Jewish race. It's, a, it's found in the book of Esther. And you know what happens? Uh, there's a call to three days of prayer and fasting. Now just think about this for a moment. A, a whole race is going to be annihilated. Three days of prayer and fasting, and the whole situation turns around, and the, the Jewish race is spared. Now, I kind of tend to think to myself, that's a good deal. Three days prayer and fasting, we can save a whole nation. I think, well, wh why wouldn't we do it? Why wouldn't we do it? It's so powerful, this thing. And I'm going to bring this out in a whole lot of different ways that I hope will be an encouragement and a blessing to you today. So with fasting mentioned so often in Scripture, it must be really important. Do you realize that it's actually mentioned one-third as much as prayer? Now, prayer is mentioned a massive amount, isn't it, in this, in this Bible? And, and fasting is one-third as much. And so it really is, it, it's, it's a, a tool in the toolbox that we cannot ignore. And if we do ignore it, I think we're not going to experience the fullness of all that God has for us in our lives, in our ministries, and in our churches. And so those who practice regular fasting, let me give you some names you might like to have the anointing some of these people carry. All right, here we go. Moses, he's a good start, isn't he? David, do you like Elijah? You know, fire from heaven. You know, you want to see that? Prophets of Baal, annihilated, the people bowing down, he is Lord. Hey, Esther, Daniel, wow, what a great leader. Anna, Paul, hey, you think, ah, oh, I don't care about any of that. What about Jesus? Right. Right. Hey, if Jesus fasted, how many of us are followers of Jesus? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, if he fasted, I want to suggest we need to fast as well. And, but if beyond Jesus, there was uh, others like Luther, Calvin, Finney, Tagbana. Yeah. We're 
We've got to do this stuff. This is the Bible. This is the book. It's in here. And at times, it's the only answer. Not all the time, but at times, it is the only answer. Now, can I just say right now, don't tune out. Don't tune out and say, oh, man. Can't we hear Russell again? (laughs) He talks about the Father and how he loves me and I don't have to get fast to get his approval or anything like that. So come on, Russell, can, can, you, know, can you cut this short? And get... No, no, we're not going to cut it short. <laughs> because I want to suggest you start somewhere. You don't have to do a three-day fast, 40-day fast, not even a day. Why don't you skip a meal for two or three days or one day? Just start. Just start. Because I'm telling you this, if you start, do you want to, want to know why I fast from time to time? Not only because it's in the Bible, but because it works. I'm telling you, this thing really works. It, it, what I find fasting ignites everything in the Spirit. It's like the Spirit just comes in a greater measure on whatever you might be doing. You know, if I've been in time of prayer and fasting, I find my worship is better. I find my reading of the word is better. I find that, you know, that my ability to love people is better. Just, everything is ignited because what, what the fasting does, it, it kills the flesh, yeah. it puts it there, and it ignites the spirit within you. Yeah. And your spirit starts to get strong. And that's how you do ministry for God. That's how you live in this world. You need to be strong in the spirit. And fasting can help you do that. So don't tune out. Start with something. In fact, you can do a Danny, a, a da- I was going to say a Danny fast, but it is a Danny <laughs> It's a Daniel fast because these guys, look, they, they, listen to this. They feed, is it 2,000 people a Sunday? Danny? Yeah, 2,000 a Sunday. So he calls the church to fasting. So what's the deal? To, how, how do you, all these people come into his church because of the food? And he's saying 21 days of prayer and fasting, you're going to have no one in attendance. You know what people are like. So what he does, they go on a Daniel fast. And they provide this fantastic food that just cuts out all the extras there and just the, the, the best possible. These, these guys are hospitality plus, all right? So once I knew Danny was coming, I said to my team, lift the hospital to another level, please. Danny's coming, <laughs> all right? Because I was worried about what Danny might think, see? So no one was worried about Russell. I thought, what's Danny going to think of the food in Church Unlimited? <laughs> so come on, team, whatever you got for lunch, just go and buy a few extra pieces, all right? That's what they did in this church. 21 days, Daniel fast. So he's in the fasting as well. So there's this didac. It's a document from the first or second century outside the New Testament. and gives us the teaching of the early church. Well, this document actually prescribed two days of fasting per week. Thank you very much. Wow. Wednesday and Friday. So that was a normal part of life, the regular pattern for the early Christians. Well, John Wesley read this document. And he thought, early church, I like what happened there. So he grabbed a hold of this, and he said to all his Methodist people, he said, we're going to fast two days a week. And listen to this, he refused to ordain anyone to the ministry who would not fast two days a week. How many ministers would we have left in our nation? Two two days a week. But what was the result, friends? The Methodist church was born, the great outpouring of the Spirit, and we love reading about John Wesley. We love reading about his success, the revival, and the massive meetings that they have. But what about the process that led to the event of revival after revival? The process was prayer and fasting twice a week. Thank you very much. (laughs) So there's a pastor who's struggling on a fast, as most pastors do, fasting away. There's a knock on the door. This lady turns up this beautiful chocolate cake with nice icing on top of it. And he looks at it and, and she says, she says, the Lord has sent me. <laughs> and he says, I believe he has. And he grabs a cake and eats it away. <laughs> when you start to fast, food is going to turn up everywhere. You know, the, the, you're going to go past McDonald's, the lights are going to be 10 times brighter than ever before. <laughs> When you go to Burger King, it's going to cry out, come and eat me. I mean, you know, and that boss of yours that's never given a free meal for 30 years, the day you fast, we're all going to the Langham for a free meal, $90 a head. And you're sitting there fasting, or else someone on every desk, 
That next day after your fast, you're going to put a nice chocolate bar or a cream, cream donut or something like that. Because the devil's got to stop you. I'm going to keep saying it. It's in the book. It's, this is in the book, all right? They did it in the book. <laughs> Jesus did it. And so that's the reason I do it. So here's a question now. What happens if you remove a vital pillar that supports a structure? Then that danger is that structure is going to collapse. I believe one of the most pillar, powerful pillars of the Christian faith and the church is prayer and fasting. If we remove that pillar, which has happened in some places, we're in danger of collapse, of the church not being fully what it might have been and what God intended for it to be. And we won't experience all the fullness of what God has for us. Now, the struggle, we basic struggle we have with fasting is this, is that we love our food. How many of you love food? That's the more hands that I've ever seen go up than any other thing I've ever mentioned in this church. We all love our food, and that's why God created chicken curry. No, no, not butter chicken. That's false. You've got to go to India if you really want the real deal of Indian food. So, you know, if you've tasted it in New Zealand, you know, just as good as it might be, multiply it by a thousand. That's what it's really like. But you've got to get up to Mumbai. <coughs> Mumbai, Russell, that's where you experience the best food in the world. All right. So you probably want to all know what kind of food is permitted while fasting. Fast food. <laughs> so what does the Bible say? Matthew 6, verse 3. When you, say it with me, give. Verse 6, when you pray. Verse 16, nice and loud, when you Fast. So say to the next person, next person next to you, when you fast. Come on, nice and loud. Don't be shy now. They're not going to bite you. All right. When you fast. So Jesus didn't say, if you fast, did he? He said, when you fast. That means he expects every born again believer to fast at times to exercise that discipline in their lives. Now, and then verse 18 says, and your father will reward you openly. Now, some of you may be sitting here, and I know some people think, that, well, I don't fast, and I, quite frankly, I'm doing pretty well. So why should I bother? Well, maybe you are doing well. Maybe your church is doing well. The whole point of this conference is our nation's not doing well. The nations are not doing well. And my Bible says if we will humble ourselves, prayer and fast and pray, it's going to give God a chance to do something in this nation and to do something in the nations of the world. You see, friends, you might wonder, you know, people, are, people go after different things. People, people want to do this and people want to do that and people want to, you know, win this or win that and the other thing and all the rest of it. But friends, I'm after a nation. I'm after a nation. I'm after the, this nation and I'm after other nations and in order to do that, I've got to just put in this discipline of prayer and fasting. If I just wanted our church to grow, maybe I don't need to do that so much. But if I want to go beyond that, more than that, then I believe for me that discipline of fasting is a part of it. So let me give you some motivations for fasting. The first one is increased spirit power. In 1985, 5,000 students went up Liberty Mountain and fasted. Imagine that, 5,000 students going up, you know, and you know, not praising, not worshiping, not singing, not fasting and praying. Why? Because the dean of students, Vernon Brewer, was diagnosed and given six months to live with cancer. 
And so these students are desperate, and they think, well, the only thing they know, they're going to pray and fast. They go up that mountain, spend a day in prayer and fasting. When I read the story, 12 years after Vernon Brewer was still alive and well, because a group of people put in that, took that uh, fasting out of the toolbox, put it into practice, and saved a young man's life. Sometimes it's the only tool that's going to work. So let's go to Luke chapter 4, 1 to 2. It says, Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We're going to come back to that. Being tempted 40 days by the devil. In those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. Now verse 14, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out throughout all the surrounding region. So Jesus goes before the fast. He is, it says Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. But when he comes out of his fast, in verse 14, it says Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. So you go from being filled with the Spirit to experiencing more of the power of God's Spirit in your life and in your ministry and in your serving God. And so before his public ministry, see, before Jesus even began his public ministry, before he preached, before he healed anyone, before his first sermon, he spent 40 days in prayer and fasting. And I believe established a model for you and I to follow after. If you want to experience more of God's power and favor in your church, in your family, in your finances, in your health, I want to suggest that you Get this tool out of the toolbox and add some times of prayer and fasting. You know, we, we've done this during the comedy. We can shout, God, heal our land. We can sing, God, heal our land. I won't try and sing it because I can't, but we, we, we sing it and we shout it and all the rest of it. And, and that's fantastic. We need it. We declare it. it that's great to do that, friends, but that's not going to heal our land. Hey, just because we shout it, it's not going to happen. It's because we sing it, it's not going to happen. The process is made clear. It needs prayer, and it also needs some fasting. You see, fasting gives us spiritual muscle. As I look across this congregation here, I can see some of you have got washboard abs. You know, really, you've been in that gym <clears throat> night and day, and you know, so you're really strong, you know. And so, you know, they, they, I, I once got an opportunity to, to hug one of the, uh, I think it was the, the All Blacks or one of the um, Blues players, and honestly, those guys are like concrete. You, you hug them and they're just so, they're like, like rocks. No wonder they can bang and, you know, just people just bounce off them. They are that strong because they've worked hard at developing their physical body, which is incredibly strong and it's hard work to do that. But I want to suggest to you that you get washboard abs in the spirit. So you get strong in the spirit here. And so if the devil comes and he punches you, he's going to break his hand because you are so strong in the spirit. If he comes and challenges you, you pull out Clint Eastwood and say, go ahead, make my day. (laughs) But you you can't do that unless you you get real strength in your spirit. And you're, you're strong in the Holy Ghost. You're strong in the power of God. And friends, if we will do that, man, we're going to be able to, see far more happen in our lives than we're seeing up till today. I wouldn't be surprised if you're feeling hungry right now. Whenever you hear a message about fasting, something seems to stir within our appetite and our taste buds, and we just want food, even if we've already had a meal. That's not surprising. Once you hear about fasting, to feel hungry. But I hope that you've seen throughout the course of this message just how powerful prayer and fasting is. In fact, it's been said that some answers to prayer we may never get until we get into this discipline of fasting. There's a story you might remember in Matthew 17 where there's this epileptic boy. His father comes asking the disciples to heal him. The disciples obviously try everything they can without any result. So then they find Jesus and Jesus turns up and he prays for the boy and casts the demon out of him and it happens in a hurry. Then the disciples say to him, well, what happened here? How come we couldn't do it? First, he addresses the whole issue of their faith. And then he talks about the fact that some things can only come out through prayer and fasting. 
And I thought that was a really challenging passage of Scripture that it would go as far as saying that there are certain things that it needs a level of power of the Spirit that only fasting and prayer can provide that is going to bring us the answer in a particular situation. So I just want to encourage you, if you've never got into this discipline of prayer and fasting, why don't you add it now? Why don't you make a decision today? I am going to do some fasting. If you've never done it before, I want to suggest start with just one day. Don't try and do three or seven or ten days. You could really mess with your whole physical body. And also get some advice from someone that you know has been experienced in fasting. If you add this discipline to your life, I'm telling you, it will change your walk with God forever. Hey, we would love to hear from you. Why don't you send us your testimony or some feedback via the website on the screen. And please join me again next week. Next time on Running With Fire. You see, what happens is to have impact for God. We have to have times in the wilderness. As we said, that's part of the process. In these times, God's preparing you for your destiny. He's getting you ready. He's shaping you. There's this incredible mandate on the New Zealand Church of New Zealand to reach the nations of the world. As you know, in the 70s, we had more missionaries per capita on the foreign field than any nation in the world. We were number one in mission. Today, we're no longer number one in mission. We are now a mission field. And I'm asking the question, what on earth happened? Where did it go? Where did this thing disappear? And so my passion and my heart is to pick up again the call of God on this nation. You see, not everything, things don't fall out of the sky. Something you've got to unlock. Something you've got to fight for. Something you've got to go after. You've got to penetrate through all the barriers, all the resistance. And I think fasting can do that. You needing to know the right way. How many of you pastors, leaders, you know God's got more for you? And you're thinking, I'd like to do this and I'd like to do that and I, I sense this is in my heart and maybe God wants me to take this direction. It says that they proclaim to fast what? To seek from Him the right way and for our little ones and all our possessions. I want to suggest this. Before a major initiative, spend some time in prayer and fasting and say, God, would you lead me in the right way? Would you protect me on this journey? Would you make sure it's a success? This is how powerful Prayer and fasting really is. It can change individual situations. It can change finances. It can change your personal life. It can change a church. It can change a city. But it also can change a nation. It can change a nation. Thanks for watching Running With Fire with Tark Barna from Church Unlimited. For more great free content, visit runningwithfire.com. You can send us your prayer requests, stream online TV and radio episodes, and view blog articles. You can also connect with Tarkbana through Twitter for regular updates. Church Unlimited meets at two locations in Auckland, New Zealand. You're welcome to come along for a visit.